Uh, Kobe Bryant set to join us after the big night last night. How do you feel today, Kobe? I feel all right. You know, I feel all right. A little bit, a little tired. But you go into it, you know you're going to get it. Uh, anticlimactic in any way that you, you're getting it and it's, you know, just in the course of the game. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, it's you just kind of just play the game, you know, and, you know, we've been struggling, so it's really just kind of about trying to win this thing. Do you remember your first game, first basket? Uh, yeah, I think I was in Boise, Idaho for a preseason <laughs> game against the Dallas Mavericks. And anything special about that hoop? Uh, I mean, the thing that was special about it is that Eddie Jones gave me a serious when in high school. He used to really, you know, look out for me when he's at Temple University in terms of, you know, allowing me to work out with those guys. And, you know, now I was with the Lakers and, you know, obviously under his mentorship. And he, I believe he gave me my first basket. What advice would this Kobe give that Kobe coming into the league? Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch, stretch, stretch some more. How how important is it though to have people in front of you before you that allow you to have sort of that goal? You know, they are always compared to Michael, which is a great compliment. But Michael did something uh, that can drive you at age thirty-seven. Do you need that? How important is it to have somebody before you who's done it? Well, I, I think it's good to have um, you know to have inspiration. Uh, before you, you know, no matter what field you're in, it's always good to have them, the people who inspire you um, to do what you do. And you know, Michael certainly was that for me, as well as so many other players that came um, came before me. And um, yeah, I use them as inspiration, and, you know, and, and also as motivation. Uh, Coach K said he texted you. Did you get the text? I sure did. Yes. How many people? Give us an idea. How many people texted you after last night? Um, about. About a hundred. Anybody that would surprise us? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think there's any surprises. You know, most of the most of the people, you know, we all know that. You know, we're all pretty close and it's close knit family in the NBA. So, Michael? No, I didn't hear from Michael. President Obama? President Obama? No, I didn't hear from President. Oh, Obama. okay. Well, <laughs> well, give me an idea who you heard from then. <laughs> you gotta get. I gotta be in a couple more films. First, man. <laughs> I, I got to have a couple cameos. Man. I, can't, I can't get that list yet. It, you know, the mentality of a score, and I've told people this, that you have to do it every single night and how tiring and exhausting it can be. But can you put into words what it's like to know you have to do this? It's not I may get to, I want to do it. You have to do it every single night. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a mentality. and I think it's something that starts at an early age. I don't think it's something where you can become a scorer. You, know, you have to have a, a certain DNA that comes along with it. So it's almost like being a fighter pilot. I mean, it's just, you know, scorers who just want to go out there and score every night are wired a little differently, I think. When you got 81 on Toronto, you know, as a scorer, did you say, I should have had more than 81? I'm not sure what I thought after that game. I, I remember, um, you know, feeling that, you know, I, like I wasn't that tired. And, and you know, because most of the nights I was just hitting jump shots and I was just really just got blistering hot, you know. And um, But now when I look back, the, the, the crazy part about that game is that I was able to have pepperoni pizza before it. <laughs> and, and right now, like right now, when I look back, there is absolutely no. Like if I had pepperoni pizza before a game, I, I would not be able to move in the first quarter. Like I'd be done. Well, well what is your pregame meal? Uh, it's like sa salmon and uh, some greens and um, potatoes. Oh, look at you being healthy. Oh, man, I'm trying. It's a struggle. It really is. It is a struggle. But at age 37, what do you do better than at age 27 when it comes to scoring? Um, huh. I, I think you, you kind of figured out the game a little bit more. So, you, you know, you don't have to, um, you know, you, you can read the defenses and manipulate defenses a lot easier uh, because you've seen so many packages. You can, you can kind of anticipate what's coming. And um, I think that makes it a lot easier. You know, the game slows down as a result. We're talking to Kobe Bryant joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Uh, Coach K was with us first hour, and he called you an assassin. What does that mean to you? <laughs> um, thanks, I guess. <laughs> what does that mean to you? 
no, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I obviously it's, um, you know, it's, it's a huge compliment. I take it as a compliment. You know, as a player that can you know, put himself in a in a space where he feels like he could, you know, finish off a team or kind of kind of lead a team. Um, to, to have that similar personality uh, of aggression and intensity. Jordan's teammates talked about they'd get the look from him if they screwed up. Um, you know, that he wasn't afraid to do that on the floor. He wanted you to keep up with him. And I said, you know, the beauty of being a competitor is you want those guys to be there with you. It may not lead by words. It's example. But do you give your teammates the look? Same, you know, uh, they know when you're mad? Well, yeah, yeah, I think they do. I mean, I, I got a lot of flack for my – "Quote unquote death stare earlier this year, which was <laughs> kind of blown out of proportion. But yeah, but I, you know, sometimes I do. I mean, it, it's it's uh, you want your teammates to to keep up with your level of intensity and and and, and commitment and and how much you care for the game. Um, I don't think it's you know, proper leadership to just you know pull yourself down so you can make yourself more relatable to the guys. I, I think it's the other way around. You have to continue to push and push and push and push and push and." Push and um, and, and, you know, demand from them to, to elevate. Can, but can you motivate Pau Gasol with words? Well, uh, it, it, it's worked successfully for two championships. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I know him extremely, extremely well, and I, and I know it gets him going. I know it um, means a lot to him in terms of, uh, you know, what drives him. And, uh, you know, it's – um, you know, I, I know how to communicate with them. You know, either you know, publicly or behind closed doors. I mean, it's a, it's a combination of both, and I, and I think you kind of have to know your guys a little bit and, and kind of know what to say and when to tweak them. The difference in offense now with Mike D'Antoni as opposed to Mike Brown. How does that affect you? Um, well, I, I do a lot more ball handling now, and uh, a lot of that is because the. Uh, the Gatsby is out. I call him the Gatsby. And uh, <laughs> what do you think of that haircut? I mean, it's it's working for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I told him. I, I said, you know, the, the, the amazing thing is like when you came from Phoenix. Like when I used to see you when you were injured in Phoenix, you were dressed like a total trucker. And now, I mean, he got like three piece suits, the little hanky in the pocket. <laughs> I was like, this dude just went Gatsby, man. He's like full blown great Gatsby. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, but he's, his injury really puts a lot of stress on me because I have to do a lot more screen rolling, and a lot more ball handling and a lot more running up and down than I, than I will when he gets back. When's he coming back? I don't know. Hopefully so. But if you're going to characterize what's happened so far this season, you've been through a lot in your 17 years. Where does this yeah. fit in with everything else with the roller coaster ride? Well, we, we had a year in, in 2003 where we started out um, relatively slow, slowly, and uh, took us a while to get going. And, and you know, this is a different situation. That team was together for for several years. You know, this team is all new. And we've obviously had kind of a roller coaster experience with coaches and um, system change and injuries. And I, I think it's important to remain patient, um, just to kind of keep things in perspective. But at the same time, you know, have a sense of urgency that no, this needs to turn around today it needs to happen now but it doesn't happen like that without nash in there and just trying to get acclimated to a new system if you were saying to the laker fan base you know what be fair to us because i know you've had words for them relax now at what point do we get nervous if this isn't turned around you know significantly well i think it's fine to be nervous i i think being nervous or or or, or um you know, uh, kind of having that, that panic button, so to speak. I think it's good for you because it, because it drives you, right? Because it means something to you as opposed to just writing it off and saying, nah, it'll turn around. Nah, it'll turn around. Nah, it'll turn around. Then it's like it doesn't mean enough to you. You know, it has to have a, a certain, you know, a carry a weight of, of, of urgency along with it if this thing's going to turn around. As far as uh, the scoring list? How important is it uh, moving up the ladder? Any sights, uh, you know, set your sights on Kareem's number? Um, no, you know what? I don't, I don't even know what, what, his, what his number is. I know it's just something that's absolutely crazy. He's, I don't know uh, if I'm going to be playing 38. That He's got 38,000. 38? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that, bro. Okay, here's one for you, though, Kobe. Michael is at 32,000. Mm-hmm. Should he be nervous? Uh, 
Uh, well, it depends how many years I got left. <laughs> well, how many years well, do you got left? I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's you know, last season was a tough season for me physically, and um, yeah, you know, I was the first time going into off season that I didn't know if I wanted to train as hard to prepare myself for the upcoming season. I, I just didn't know if I had it in me to do it anymore after 16 years. And then one morning I woke up and that desire was there, and off I went. So I mean, it's it's um, it's tough when you get to you know 17 years, 18 years. You know, with no breaks. I mean, I haven't taken a break. I haven't had a chance to let my mind rest or let my body rest. It's just been, this has been nonstop. Is it your mind or your body that will tell you when to quit? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I, I hear so many things from different athletes who've come before me, um, you know, be it Barry Sanders or Michael, um, and, and they all have different perspectives on it. I think it's different for each individual. With me, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Uh, when they hang the jersey in the rafter. 24 or 8? Uh, I'm good either way. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy for my jersey to be up there with these guys. I mean, you know, if you look up at the rafters, um, you know, the players that have the jerseys retired with this organization just so happen to be some of the best players of all time. And, and for me to have, you know, 8 or 24 up there is, uh, is a huge blessing. Well, congratulations on the great honor and uh, keep stretching. Thank you. And you got you got to give me one of these films. Okay, but if I say to Sandler that you'll be in a movie, are are you going to be Kobe Bryant or do you want to be somebody different? Because I didn't want to play myself. I, I don't. I don't care. Look, listen, I could be an extra in the background. Or okay. Something. While you're doing your, your your thing, okay, I could just kind of just walk by in the back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I'll I'll text Sandler when we hang up, and I'll say that Kobe would like to be in the movie but not be Kobe Bryant. I'm telling him I'm cool being like a coffee server, whatever. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Kobe. You got it, Dan. All right. Kobe Bryant. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. I think he realizes his, uh, his career, just like I did, cameos in Sandler movies. Doesn't pay well. A lot of exposure, though. Yeah, Paul. Nice that you can make a young man's dreams come true. This is what I do. Yeah. Mike Trout wanted to be in a Sandler movie. I think they look at me and go, if he can be in, then anybody can be in. I'll see what I can do and try to make dreams come true. My man. Yeah. <laughs>